So this is kind of an impromptu podcast that you're about to listen to. A.G. Giuliani and myself were having a conversation about artificial intelligence, its place in schools, and some of the negatives and obviously pauses of it and the concern that it is sometimes replacing our thinking. One of the conversations I've been having with groups that I think is really important is that schools should actually help students attain knowledge to develop wisdom. It's not just about consuming knowledge. And one of the examples I shared in the podcast is you often hear people say, well, you know, do we need to know certain information because you can just Google it? And that's true. You can Google it and you attain a ton of knowledge, but that doesn't actually mean you have an understanding of that information and you aren't able to actually make really meaningful connections to that. And that pursuit of wisdom in whatever we're, you know, focusing on is really, really crucial. So what AJ and I did, and again, impromptu, he did such an amazing job, is I wrote a post um, about a year and a half ago, and it was four questions to consider use it for using ChatGPT. And it was meant to be like a professional learning uh, suggestion. Like, here's some ways you can actually have these conversations, lead them with your staff. And, you know, there's more to AI than just ChatGPT. There's a ton of other opportunities. So what I did is I actually asked AJ the four questions to give examples. And what I love about how this podcast turned out, it's not something you can just listen to on your own. It's something you can listen to with your staff. And it's something you can re replicate, pause, and share with your staff as well. Because I think it's us modeling our learning. There's one part in the podcast I think is really, really powerful where because it is an authentic conversation, I challenge AJ on something he says. And I was a little bit nervous to do it because I didn't want to put him in a bad spot. And he comes up with such a brilliant answer. And it really pushed my own thinking, which is the, the reason we ha should have the conversations. We can't just jump into this stuff without kind of having the push and pull, but we also have to figure out ways that we can utilize this to not only benefit our students, but ourselves. Because if we can't figure that out, it's going to replace our thinking and honestly, a little bit concern our humanity. So I love this podcast. It was just kind of done last, like I said, last second, we were just talking. I'm like, I'm going to record this. Let's go. So here's kind of a, I don't want to say it is a little unfiltered. I guess we all filter ourselves a little bit, but really talking about all of the negatives and positives of artificial intelligence and ways we can use them as both, um, in the classroom and with administration. I hope you love it. Welcome back to another episode of the Innovators Mindset Podcast. Okay, everyone, this is a, I don't know if this is an emergency podcast. This is like an emergency podcast, right? And so um, I actually was just having a conversation with my friend, AG Giuliani, and we are just having uh, talking about artificial intelligence and education and things like that. And I'm, he, and for all of you, AJ has been on my podcast, probably you're, you're like the Tom Hanks of my podcast. Is yeah. that what you say? I gotta be top three. I gotta be top three. You'd be like, I've been on my podcast the most. And so AJ and I are very good friends. And honestly, out of anyone who's talking about artificial intelligence and education, AJ is my guy. Like he knows the stuff. And I actually think you go through it um in a really a thoughtful way i know you're really talking about meaningful and like i'm really big on the notion of like attaining knowledge to develop wisdom the ideas of like really kind of focusing on curiosity and a little bit of my concern is are we actually using not just artificial intelligence but technologies to replace thinking to actually and and maybe even almost replace humanity in a little bit of a sense like so we're going to get some questions. Give me like kind of like a brief overview of your kind of thoughts, like artificial intelligence and education. Like just give us like kind of two minutes. Like what is your kind of mantra or, you know, thinking on this? Yeah. So, I, I mean, my big thing is that we're kind of in a perfect storm in education right now. Every kid has a device. Every teacher has a device. Mm -hmm been trained and using all these devices we went through web 2.0 using all these different tools and everything i haven't heard that term in a long time web yeah right you know yeah, but yeah. now all of a sudden we're at this kind of impasse where we've been using technology in education but it's never been generative right like google comes out 
and we can look up things easier than we used to in the library. Yeah. But never have we come to a place where it can actually do the work for students. And so now we're at this place where the AI can do the work for students and everybody's freaking out about it until you show them, George, that AI can do the work for teachers <laughs> and administrators as right. well. Right. And then everybody's like, whoa, whoa, whoa. So my big thing that I work on with people is this could be a great useful tool to put together meaningful and relevant, engaging and empowering activities but it's also a very powerful tool to push compliance and traditional education forward on both sides of the equation, both the student side and the teacher side. And that's, that's my big fear. That's what I talk about when I work with, with staff. Well, okay. And like, so I actually, AJ was not, by the way, this is how good AJ is at this stuff. He's not prepared. We're sitting there talking. I'm like, we're going to record a podcast. Cause I want to like capture this stuff. Uh, because I actually asked AJ to, uh, write a response. And this is something I suggested as a professional learning activity. And I, I changed the, when I initially wrote it. Um, this is very early on, like chat GPT, maybe it had been out like a month or two, or I guess I don't want to say out, but yeah. known, I guess, you know, for a month or two. And so I actually said, Hey, here's some professional learning, an, an idea about this. And I, there's very specific orders on this. Um, and I'm going to ask AJ these questions. I'm going to give him one at a time and we're going to see what his answers are. And he, by the way, he, no prep. So we're going to see how he does. And he told me, I asked him to write a blog post. So, um, we'll post that on both of our sites as well. So the four questions are, what are some of the negatives and positives of artificial intelligence, chat GPT, whatever. And I think a lot of people, when they think artificial intelligence, am I wrong about this? They think chat GPT first and, and maybe even only right now. Right. And I think. Yeah because that's kind of how it came in. Um, what are some of the ways that you can use artificial intelligence in everyday lives? Um, how can we use this AI in our current roles? So as teachers, as administrators, how can we help students with utilize artificial intelligence for their learning in and inside and outside of school? And before I get into those questions, when you're talking about this, have you ever seen the, I think it's um, the chat GPT or sorry, the South Park episode, where Mr. Garrison or the kids are all using artificial intelligence to write their essays and Mr. Garrison's thrown off because their essays are so good. And then he goes home and his partner basically says, Hey, do you know, there's a thing called Jack GPT and it can actually uh, grade your essay, those essays for you. So basically what's happening is no one's thinking, but everyone's using it on both sides. So that's what I thought of when you talked about, it. have you ever seen that episode? It's actually hilarious. I saw that clip though before I haven't seen the whole episode. But <laughs> right. I right. Right. Cause it's like that, that's kind of what it's like, Hey, like, you know, like, and I, I, I honestly, I, I think this is why I'm like, I don't know if this is like a George intervention. Cause I'm struggling. Cause I'm, I'm like, maybe I'm old school. I'm writing my own stuff still. Like I'm actually thinking I'm, I'm writing my own blog posts and I'm like watching people say, Hey, you can do a presentation in five seconds. And I'm like, yeah, but you don't understand anything that you're about to say. Yeah, but that's that's the problem. Your your question number one, which is the positive and negatives. Yeah, that that is the big issue. Think about like in education when we didn't want to give a kid a test and we do a group project. Right. And the end result of the group project is a big slide presentation that right. you had to do research for. You had to spend time designing it, building it together, and then presenting it. Mm -hmm. And now you use a tool like Canva or Gamma and put in just your topic, come up with an outline and get a beautiful, I'm talking like an amazingly designed presentation yeah. in 10 seconds. And so what what do we do about that, right? Because all these ways we've kind of like done traditional education, but just yeah. like not new and better, just kind of different than what we used to do right. Uh, right. Is, is, really, is really being completely, I, I like to say that artificial intelligence crushes traditional education like it would be the best student in your class of all time right you know and so if you think about it that way you start thinking about all right well what do i need to do in order to make sure kids are still learning still creating still to your point thinking yeah we wouldn't want to think <laughs> i'm like i'm like i'm i feel and this is why i want to have this is because i i see the benefits of this 100 percent. but i also i'm a little bit nervous i'm I'm nervous that people are embracing the 
the wrong part of it. And you and I, before we even got on, we, I talked about one of the, my favorite books ever is Dan Pink's Drive. And uh, he talks about like, and I kind of made the connection because I actually remember it really moved us away from uh, award ceremonies. Uh, um, I know this sounds weird, but like really made us rethink kind of like how we do grading and things like this. And the premise of the book is that basically those carrot and stick things don't actually promote critical thinking, you know, um, curiosity. Those are really good for like low level thinking. And I think the, I can't remember if this is a, his analogy, but basically, you know, if I'm going to say like, Hey, I'm going to give you 10 bucks to mow the lawn that like, you don't have to really think you just do the thing. And that's like, so it is part of like, that's kind of where I'm seeing some of this stuff to go. Are we using AI to kind of mow the lawn and do the low level thinking? Or are we just doing it to replace our own minds um, in this? So let's, let's do the questions. I'm like curious what your answers are. And I, I think, you know, here's a weird thing. We're actually not doing this podcast. This is all artificial intelligence. We're just faking it. <laughs> yeah, right. We just, we just took our faces yeah. and cloned it. Yeah. That's it. It's not, well, even that, that, you know, it's kind of the hope. Like I actually, like, I'm like, Hey, this is super easy to record. Let's capture some of this thinking. And I'm saying, I'm like, I hope, I hope I'm not the only one struggling with some of this too. And I, I think we should have conversations on this, not saying don't use it, but also just let's be thoughtful of how we do. And like, is it just almost replacing us in a way? I, has anyone ever seen Terminator? Like, <laughs> yeah, all the time. Is it kind of going that way. I'm like, hey, let's give the machine. All right. Anyways. Okay. So I'm going to, the first question that actually is a two parter. And I very intentionally, and by the way, AJ and I are kind of hopefully, I'm going to post these questions below. And Hopefully you can do this and maybe watch it with your group, but also get them and think about your conversations that it can lead to. Okay. So first of all, let's give me a couple of negatives of artificial intelligence. Don't tell me any of the good stuff. Let's just get the, what is some of the concerns you might have right now? Cause you're yeah. by the way, and why I'm asking this, you're known as an advocate. And I know you've thought about the negatives of this too. Cause I think a lot of times the advocates don't necessarily say like, Hey, by the way, be thoughtful of this. So I think that's a really important aspect. Yeah, I, I would say, and I'd say this all the time, I'm not pro AI or anti AI. I'm just a realist. It's here. We have to deal with it. And um, we can use it for, for both things. Some negatives, some big negatives about artificial intelligence. Uh, number one, it's being utilized right now in a lot of workplaces and a lot of education places to just do the work right? Write the email for you to the parent instead of you thinking about that. Develop the lesson for you. Write the essay for the student. Answer the discussion questions for the student. So it's just taking tasks that we used to think and have to kind of create something. And it's just saying, we're going to do it for you or really help you enough that you're not going to spend time going through that process, right? And these are, these are small things like I just mentioned, George, but also yeah. really big things. Could be just like writing your own curriculum. Right. You know, it has the ability to do that. Or in the case of like an author, we're both authors writing someone's entire book. Well, that was, that was like actually one of the concerns of the writer's strike in Hollywood, right? Like they're well, saying like, Hey, you're, first of all, you're not paying us very well for stuff we're creating that we typically, because now like streaming and that's the whole thing that's changed everything. But now you can just say like, write this, like this person, and then it will shoot that out too. And so, Hey, yeah. and there's, there's other big negatives though. Like, there's a lot of um, just bias that's in a lot of the artificial intelligence because it's trained by human data, right? right? So if you ask ChatGPT right now, George, if you typed in, hey, who is the um, international soccer player with the most goals? It would give you two guys' names. Right. It wouldn't give you Christine right. Sinclair, who has 186 goals, which is way more than the guys, but it, it's because it's trained on data. So say it was a thousand Listen. articles. And about the guys and canadian Boom. like that one i think you like that one for you. <laughs> wow yeah that's a that's awesome hey i gotta there i can't remember where i heard this but you said something really powerful because you you said i don't and you didn't say you said about the being the realist and i heard i can't remember where i heard this from and it was like saying i'm not an optimist or i'm a pest or not a pessimist because the, the pessimist thinks Typically things are so bad, there's nothing I can do. And the optimist thinks things are so good, there's nothing I can do, right? <laughs> like it's, it's kind of, do you know what I mean? 
It's yes. kind of like an interesting thing. And I, and I think that's, you know, kind of put in perspective, you know, and so, and I honestly, agent, I could probably talk about all of this stuff forever, but I do want to move on to the next one. Okay. So this is the, the second part of this question. So what are some of the positives that you see? Like, give me one or two. And obviously yeah. there's, there's good ones too, right? Like yeah, there, there's tons of them, but like, for example, um, just in terms of like a teacher's workload and administrator's workload, a lot over the past 15, 20 years has gotten very administrative tasks, yeah. things that we didn't necessarily have to do that are now on top of a teacher's plate and everything. It can help with a lot of those things, right? right? So my hope is that it can help with some of those mowing the lawn things. So we have more time to spend mm -hmm. creating meaningful, relevant lessons that are curiosity, you know, driven, that type of thing. The other piece is, it's a great creative planning partner. Mm -hmm. So for example, one of the ways that I use magic school, which is kind of like a, an app that over a million yeah. teachers have signed up for is I don't use it to create a lesson plan. There's actually a part of magic school that's called make it relevant. And what you put in is what you're teaching, the grade level of your kids and what your kids are interested in. And it'll give you some ideas oh. for how to make that lesson or activity relevant for your kids. And then you take that, you put on your designer hat and kind of make it um, actually come to life. But there's so many things like that as a creative planning partner that are amazing for, for students and teachers alike. There's a, there's a guy, um, he, his, he's like a financial uh, guy on YouTube. His name's, his YouTube channel is Minority Mindset. And he actually said, um, basically, you have to see it as a second brain not to replace your brain. That's a very different thing. And I like that, that idea of, of, of second brain. Uh, the, I, I actually just posted this today and I don't know when you're hearing this podcast, but I talked about something I've written about years ago, the idea of like, which is better writing down notes or taking a picture of notes and by far and away, it has shown that writing the notes is actually better for memorization. Okay. So then my argument is, okay, so what's the goal of what we're doing with it? Are we actually just trying to get kids to memorize stuff? Or are we actually trying to get kids to understand it? So if you took a picture of the notes, looked at the picture, and then actually blogged about those ideas, not only by default, would you actually memorize it, you'd have a better understanding. So you'd use all the, so that's, you know, because like even the, I was having a conversation with a group yesterday when like I was talking about the, the Hattie's uh, learn, was it the Hattie learning? Like what's it called? What am I, why am I? It's like, it's, this has effect size, the effect size on this. And so my question is like, how, how's met, how's learning being measured? Is it just like how people do on tests? Like, is that like, how do you know this? And I think it's really hard to, measure creativity, measure thinking. So even like when we take the handwritten notes thing and, and versus the can the taking a picture, are we asking kind of like focusing on the wrong area? Are we actually, and this is a big thing for me right now. Are we attaining knowledge to develop wisdom? That's the most important aspect. And so I understand like, Hey, let's take some of that. Like, Hey, well, you don't need to know that because you can Google it. Well, yeah, you can Google it and that's understand, but like you Googling it still doesn't mean you understand it. That's right. That's it's the important aspect of it. It's not transfer, right? You take that picture and you're writing a blog post, you're transferring your understanding right. in a new and unique way. And that's what we want from education. We want kids to take the things that they're learning and transfer it to new, unique opportunities. Love it. Okay. So don't talk about education. You cannot, you cannot answer this with an education thing. Okay. What is like, like, how do you use artificial intelligence in just everyday life? Like what are some ways that you see value in it? I got, I got some easy ones, but I want to hear what you got. Yeah. My, my brother's a lawyer and they use it all the time now, not ChatGPT, but Lexus Nexus is built in uh, AI, you know, hard and like how, arduous of a process it was to find yeah. precedents and course things and everything all of a sudden you've taken that time 10 x it down in terms of what you're able to find building your court cases and everything it's it's used pretty much in every industry in my own life yeah. how i like using it though yeah. is i like every single day when i um pull up a text message or email or something like that and i get suggested things i love it 
right? I have suggested it. It fixes my my writing, my grammatically correct, all those things. It tells me I use words more often than I should, right? Like all those little right. things it makes me do a better job than I would if I didn't have that little AI system with me. Right. So, you know, like, you know, uh, like I just ran a marathon, which the best benefit of running a marathon is you get to tell everyone you're at a marathon. <laughs> Right? Oh, you did? Uh, are you did you not know that? Hey, I ran a marathon. <laughs> yeah. So they, why I'm bringing this up. There's like, I've done, I've done a few in the past years ago. Right. And I wanted to like properly train for this. And so you go on, it's weird. Cause I, you go onto Google and you look and this plans behind a paywall or whatever. So I actually just said, Hey, um, make a plan for 16 week marathon training. Okay. And you know, for an intermediate, then it does it. So, you know, I live in Florida, moved from Canada. So it lists it every day and it says in miles. So I'm like, Hey, can you switch it to kilometers? Boom. Switches to kilometers. Okay. Put in a table for me, puts in a table. Good to go. So like, like what was really weird of that process, Google was too slow. You know what I mean? Like yeah. it was actually too much work and you know, and then I have an understanding of, you know, some fitness stuff, you know, I used to do, you know, training and all this other stuff. So I modified things that I needed to modify. It wasn't just like blindly doing this too, but that saved me hours to focus on actually getting my feet on the ground, which is the most important part of training, not just looking at a plan and trying to find one, but actually moving. And it, you know, it got some, you got some stuff out of the way. So that, that was really helpful. Um, even, you know, and I know, uh, actually I'll save that for the next one. Okay. So tons of weight. Hey, you're trying to, you want to, you know, do a good training plan, meal plans. I actually, there's a great video of someone doing like, Hey, like I want to eat this, make me a grocery list, put it in a table, tell me what to buy. It was like kind of, kind of interesting there. Okay. Next one. How do you, okay. So now the magic question. And so I'm going to get, I want to ask you one for each. How can this, you know, make my life easier as a teacher? And how can this make my life easier as an administrator? So give me like one example of each. Yeah, I would say uh, teachers, you know, a, a lot of us still have, you know, PowerPoint, Google Slides, presentation slides that we're presenting information to students with, right? Direct instruction is still a part of education. And uh, for me, one of the ways that I love talking with teachers is like, we all have the problem we are presenting new information or reviewing information and we ask a question and the same three hands go up in the class. Right. And it's like, maybe two of those hands, you don't even want to go up. <laughs> you know, it's like, it's the same, <laughs> right. it's the same ones they're all going the time. Up, they're going up whether they have an answer or not. Yes. Right. So um, what I like them to do is actually use this AI tool called CuriPod, C-U-R-I-P-O-D. And what it allows you to do is you can take your pre-existing slides or you can create new ones and it makes them interactive. And so it allows every single student, all 25, 30 kids in your class to respond. You see what their answers are. You can do poll questions, short answer, true, false, all different types of drawings. So for math, they can draw out their stuff. It comes up the board. Everything on the front end that they see is anonymous, but on the back end, you get all the students' names. So you can see, oh, this kid's messing around. I can take away. But the biggest thing I like about CuriPod is it makes all those things for a teacher so much easier. It can translate all the slides for you. So if you have English language learners, boom, it can right. translate all the slides. If uh, a kid missed class, you can just with one click, make that a self-paced lesson that they can go through and have the same uh, kind of experience that you had in class. And number three, there's this really cool part of PuriPod that's called AI feedback, in which you kind of help train the AI on feedback to give kids. And so if you have an exit ticket or a check for understanding, all 25 kids are getting feedback from the AI in 30 seconds, less than 30 seconds. And as a teacher, you get to see it. We can talk. It's so hard to give feedback in like a timely manner to all your kids. And this now can help you do it. So as a teacher, it makes your job just so much easier, but also better in terms of the learning experience. Yeah. And like one of the things that, you know, you know, I'm working on the timeless principles for, for this. The one of the biggest things was for me, accessibility right? The ability to uh, subtitle stuff and not only subtitle in English, but multiple languages. Now there's, I've also seen, uh, I've my actually Alec, you know, my brother, brilliant mind in this, you know, he's someone you should definitely connect with if you're interested in this stuff as well. Um, 
he he like I think he did an opening, but he did it in a totally different language and it translated, but it used his mouth, right? And I've actually seen interviews where they have like a leader outside of North America speaks, you know, a uh, different language than English. And then they use that person's voice, but then have it translate in English. So it was like, pretty fascinating. All right. So administrator. So like, I'm, you know, I'm a principal, vice principal, assistant principal, superintendent. Like what's one thing you've seen that has been beneficial with artificial intelligence? Yeah. So I think there's a lot of ways that it can help the administrative tasks, but I'm not going to go there because that's right. kind of boring. the way I'm going to go there is I think most administrators want to spend more time as an instructional leader, but maybe you're an administrator and you taught fourth grade and you're now a middle school administrator, or maybe you taught biology and you're a high school administrator. Now with AI tools, you can get some really great ideas and be able to give feedback and different types of things to help you connect with the math teacher, connect with the English teacher, that type of thing, and help you with some instructional leadership. I see administrators all the time struggling like, well, you know, I was a math teacher. I don't know if I can work in this department. Of course you can. You know good pedagogy. You know good instruction. Right. Now get some ideas for their content area and help you bring your good instruction to them. So I think that's a, a really nice bridge that it gives for instructional leadership. I love that. Okay. Uh, yeah. You know, like, Hey, I'm like curious about this. So do you remember, I know you were in men for a little bit. I don't know if you had to go through this process. Do you remember like you had to do like planning for like, there's gotta be something that's going to do that. Yes. Right. Cause that's, that's a, that's a mow the lawn thing. Yes. Right. Yes. Like, oh, hey, we yes. got to figure out when the gym's open, yep. you know, like, Hey, we got to X amount of time is going to be all AI now, right? It's like, you know, it's going to be, not, it's not going to be gigantic print, printed boards with sticky notes Magnets and sticky notes. <laughs> and we're all moving it around. Yeah. Those all days right. are, are going to be long gone. <laughs> all right. Okay. This is the, okay. This is the, and by the way, the, what I'm hoping is that someone hears this, they pick up some ideas from you, but also they pick ideas from us in actually having this conversation with their staff. So there is a there is a huge intentionality, not just in the questions, but in the order. So let's get the negatives out. Let's talk about the stuff and then switch our brains to looking and finding opportunities. Um, then actually see value in what we do every day in our lives. Then actually, how do we, you know, make our I, I don't want to say only make our jobs easier, because like scantrons make our job easier but they don't necessarily deepen learning Do you know what i'm saying so like and i always give this example we got a scantron as a high school teacher what i do boom everything's multiple choice and and this is early on in my career and it's like did that deepen learning for our kids or did that just make my life easier and so it's not just about making it easier how does it actually lead to better learning for us as well so i think that's a really important aspect but then the last question, and to kind of get to this, because I think a lot of people focus on the last question first, but if they don't see value in their life, that's where they, that's where they push this stuff away. How do we use this? Like, how do kids use this? And, and I'll give you a little analogy. There's two types of, there's two principles that I've seen. And, you know, one walks into a room, sees a, use, a teacher using a smart board, and like, oh, so much amazing technology happening in this classroom. I'm like, well, kids weren't doing anything, right? You know, and the other one focuses on what are the kids doing with this stuff? And that's, that's where I'm trying to get people to go. So what are a couple of things that you've seen that really can, you know, be beneficial to students in the way that they're using this for learning? Well, I'll tell you what, George, this is where I get to my real, put my realist hat on. Yeah. Because in a traditional learning environment, there's not many positives to students using AI. It's just not like there's like if you are giving traditional assignments and essays and tests and homework assignments and stuff like that, you know, students can really use AI just to as the easiest way to cheat ever in human history. Hey, I'm going to push you back a little bit on this and here's how I'm going to push you. And this is why I can talk to AJ and, and maybe I'm pushing myself here a little bit. You got to find a different word than traditional. And here's why. You and I are both storytellers. That's the most traditional practice has been done forever. And we both see it as hugely beneficial. So yeah. do you know, do you know what I mean? Like, I, so, and, and I'm like struggling. Cause I'm like, not, like, I understand, I understand what you're saying, but we also, um, 
I don't know. I mean, maybe I'm and like I'm t- I'm kind of pinching myself right. cuz I'm like you know what I mean? Like cuz I I I you know, our traditional teachers, I'm guilty of saying that. And it's like, no, it's actually the bad ones. That's yeah. what I'm talking about cuz like there are some really good traditional practices that are still beneficial. So that's where I'm like so I don't know. I would say, I would say compliance based practices, right? So yeah, like that's a way Oh, I fit forever forward when you hear yeah. AJ say that Compliance. You gotta, go, you gotta put Astros George Curls push. That's yeah. a that's a think this is why I have AJ on because I, you know what? I like pushed back, but I didn't know what to say. Like I didn't know what that is a way better way of saying that. Yeah. Compliance yeah. based practices, right? But I would I would say this, George. So just wait, hold on a second. This is why I have AJ on. I just gotta like kudos to how smart this guy is. Like that because I kind of put you on the spot and I didn't know if you're coming up with something. You that was you crushed it. I'm proud of you, buddy. Yeah, you know, that's what I happened. was pretty good because we didn't, we have no, like, this is no prep. <laughs> no, no, no. This, is a real, this is a real conversation. Yeah, dog. yeah. That was great. I'm, I'm like, I'm impressed, man. That was awesome. That was great. But the, I think this is like the whole point is that we got to have these real conversations yeah. that aren't, aren't prepped as well, you know, to, to talk about what, what it looks like. Here's what I would say for, for students and, and teachers is like, I'll give you this example. My mom always would say, you got it so easy. Because back in my day, when we were writing a research <laughs> paper, we would have to go to the library, right. pull out the microfiche, pull out the copier, copy it, take it out, right. cut out the quote we wanted to use, paste it on. And that's where copy, cut, and paste those terms come from, right? So never before, like right now, imagine if you said, hey, for this research paper, we're going to go old school. You got to go to the library and use the microfiche. Like we would never do that. So that's the moment we're in with AI where... For years and years, George, I taught MLA citation, right. took off for works cited. I could just tell the kids, hey, use these two sites. You can get all your work cited perfect. Keep your academic integrity. Have your citations perfect MLA. Right. Keep right. your academic integrity. But we don't need to spend all my class time doing that. And you don't need to spend all your time worrying about getting points off on that, right? Right. But here's, here's how I see it from a student perspective. They, and I would say, I'm talking from like a father of five. I've got a ninth grade daughter. I've got a sixth grade son. I've got a fourth grade son. I got a second grade. I got kids all across the. the, What students a lot of times struggle with, and I struggle with this as a learner right now, just say all learners is like, say you're writing a paper and you got white page syndrome. You're staring at the page. You don't know how to get started. AI is the perfect place to go to to get some ideas and yep. get you started. Say you are doing a math problem and you're at home and you don't have parents to help you with that math problem. Well, AI can show you all the exact steps and help you understand the concept in the same way that Khan Academy videos did 10 years ago, but now it can actually help you as a tutor. And so this like personal tutor thing, Sal Khan actually talks about this and it's pretty genius. He says, the reason there's a bell curve is because there's 25 kids in a class. Yeah. If you, they did a whole experiment. If you just gave every kid a personal tutor, there would be no bell curve because right. everybody would be at that 85 to 100% in terms of, so that's what AI can do for students. It can help them out hmm. like a teacher would, giving right. them feedback, helping them giving ideas or like a tutor would, but in real time when you need it, even if you don't have a teacher or tutor or parent or an adult present to help you out. And that's a pretty amazing thing to think about in 2024 to always have access to a personal tutor for anything you're working on you know they like when you're talking about that you know i there's uh there's like uh on my blog there's a a bg and an ag before grammarly and after grammarly right and so sometimes i go revisit my old blog posts and then i like want to revisit kind of give some new insights but I, I like Grammarly my blog and I'm like, oh, this is so bad. So many things wrong. And it's almost like, you know, it's not just fixing my grammar and, you know, spelling or whatever. I'm actually like kind of going through, I'm like, okay, I don't want this many red marks. <laughs> like I want to get better at this so that when I, you know, hit that Grammarly button, it's not like just all messy. And so you're trying to, so I'm like always kind of, 
being thoughtful of this. I just did, um, I'm, I know you know Ryan Holiday, uh, his work. I'm reading the book, uh, or I just read the book Perennial Seller. And I actually, I'm reading this because uh, Allison Apps and I have a new book coming out called What Makes a Great Principal. And I'm just kind of thinking about, you know, the release, all of this stuff. But as I'm reading the book, I find some really powerful ideas in connection to education. Like, cause his whole thing is like, how do you create something that's timeless? And I'm like, well, how do we create learning that's timeless? And so I actually did a podcast on it. And then I said like, Hey, you know, some of my own insights. And then I said, Hey, write a five tweet chat GPT, write a five tweet summary to, um, to actually, um, tell what the book's about. Now I read it. So I'm, I know if it's right or wrong. Right. But I don't want to go too long. I, so I, that's why I say the five tweet summary because it does that. But then I pulled out three quotes that really resonate with me and how I make my connection to what they do in education. And I feel that's where I can provide an insight that honestly AI can't provide. And I know this sounds weird. Neither can Ryan Holiday who wrote the book. So I, so when you talk about the notion of making learning meaningful, that's, that's what I try to do meaningful to not only, you know, what I'm doing currently from a writing standpoint, but an education standpoint, cause that's kind of my focus area. So I, I just love this. So if you ever want to connect, I asked AJ to kind of blog about this and we started talking. I was like, we got to record this. I want to, I don't want to, I don't want to lose this stuff. So AJ does a ton of work on this. Him and I are starting to do some work kind of doing on the admin side, the teacher side. And I think both of us, as much as, you know, we embrace this stuff, we both see ourselves as someone who are people who are continuously learning this as well. Right. I think when you, deem yourself the expert. I'm like, I don't know. Like you weren't an expert two years ago. Like what's going on? Yeah. You know you're mean? That fair? yeah I mean, I, I don't think anybody's really an expert because this is all new and, and incoming. I think people, more people are sharing their learning experiences with AI and that's how sometimes you get viewed as expert, but you're really just sharing your learning, going through, sharing what's working, what's not tinkering, playing with things, all these things we want students doing. I think a lot of folks are starting to do with AI. So uh, thanks for everyone for listening. AJ, thanks for being on. But here's what I'm going to challenge everybody with who's listening to this. I hope you can watch this for you with your PD, see some of the conversation, pause it, you know, because like this, is a, like a lot of times we do these podcasts, I post on YouTube, post on different places and maybe have people actually listen to it and then, you know, come to a PD and provide their own ideas or watch it together, pause it, have some of this, but like, don't limit. And I think this is the big thing for both of us. Don't limit your learning to what we're saying. You figure out and make it because your communities are different, where you're at is different. And that's, I think, why we wanted to do this is to kind of give you some ideas, but you got to figure out the solutions for your community. That's, that's something, you know, because th there's so much that we could have said or, and stuff we don't know as well. And we're tr trying to figure it out. And that's why I wanted John. So, Thanks everyone for listening. AJ, dude. Thanks for having me, man. Compliance learning, man. It's going to stick with me forever. I'm going to like steal that too, but I'm like, Hey, look at this thing I made up. I'm cutting this part out. No, I'm just kidding. All right. Uh, as always, thanks for having me, George. Thanks for listening everybody. Right. That was awesome. Thanks brother.